Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to my very first F-18 Hornet training tutorial on how to start up the Hornet. There's a lot of different ways people do it. Um, I was fortunate to have some friends that actually walked me through the process and uh, there's uh, several YouTube videos out there. But uh, I stream on Twitch as well and I was walking people through and some people thought it'd be a good idea to uh, uh, post up a startup video for this thing and to get people started you know especially people coming in new to the game so DCS is a very fun game there's a lot of things that you can do and the Hornet is by far one of my favorite aircraft to fly um, of course I'm not like everyone else I don't have all the, the aircraft you know I just I don't want to take the time to learn every every aircraft in the game uh, but this one is uh, this one's really fun. It's a lot of fun. It handles well, and it's very maneuverable. And the good thing is a multi-role, so you can actually do air-to-air -air combat and attack ground targets. So without further ado, we're going to jump straight into it. I'm not much for talking as far as uh, knowing what to say, everything. So uh, we're going to see how this goes. All right. So the only thing we're going to do, we're going to come over here to instant action. All right. And make sure the F-18 Hornet is uh, is selected. And what we're going to do, we're going to come to, let's see, cold and dark. I actually don't think the map is actually dark, but it's been a while since I've been on this. I'm going to go to my mission ed editor and um, do all my stuff in there. Except for carrier landings. I like to get warmed up on carrier landings by coming to uh, instant action and just do some of those let's let this thing load up come on why are you being slow today yeah go figure I, I get I gotta do a training video and now it wants to take its time come on I think I can I think I can <clears throat> there's a lot of you know as you can see there's a lot of terrain preloads and everything and uh, on mission editor it can take it can take some time to load up everything but uh, once it gets loaded and uh, it won't take as long to load anymore all right here we go all right most of your missions you know you got all this stuff you just read over it and it'll tell you everything you need to know about the mission weather pattern <coughs> frequencies everything like that and these will be uh, these will change uh, whenever you do it in the mission editor and start doing your own missions, you basically type what you want all this to say. All right, let's jump straight in. All right, so we're here. Here's a pretty old Hornet right here. Ain't she a beaut? All right, the first thing you want to do is you want to come down here and you want to find this right here. All right, battery on and off and override switch. All right, you want to hit this battery, right click, go to battery on. All right, now you see these little lights come on. All right, next thing you want to do is you want to come over here to your APU. All right, you find this on your left side, right in front of the engine crank. So remember where the engine crank is. All right, so we're going to click the APU on. And you want to just let it power up. When this light comes on, you want to hit your engine crank to the right. You always want to start your right engine first. All right, so we have the light on. We're going to go to the right with the engine. We're going to come over here. And you're going to watch this right here. All right, so when this gets up to 20%, Whatever your key bindings are, or you can actually look into the controls, and it will tell you what uh, what key to push. But just remember, 20% right here, 20 RPM. We're a little high right now, but that's okay. We're talking. All right. So I've got my key binding set for my throttle. So I'm going to idle it up. It moves. And as you can see, now the number is climbing. So we're going to let this get up to at least 
All right. And now you see, oops, my bad. Sorry about that. <coughs> All right. So as you can see right now, your fuel and everything showed up. Everything's coming up. We got 10,780 pounds of fuel. All right. So now what we want to do, what I like to do first is come over here to the INS and I want to switch this to ground. Now if you was on the carrier, the carrier would it would be CV. But on because we're at an airfield, we're going to go and put this on ground. All right. So after that, you want to come up here to the bleed air. All right. And what you're going to do with this is you're going to right click and a lot of times it won't work if you put it in the middle so we kind of put it on the edge like around here on your cursor <coughs> sorry about the coughing guys um and you're going to right click and what you're going to do you want this button to turn all the way around till it gets back to right here so we're going to go ahead and do that Alright, so now we've, we've bled the uh, airlines. Alright, and that's all you need to do with that. The next thing you want to do, what I like to do, is uh, come up here and go ahead and turn on your DDIs. These are your DDIs. So we'll click on, you got the night version, or not night version, but uh, night mode and day mode. Well, as you can see, it's daytime, so we're going to go to day mode. We're going to go ahead and click on both of those. And you can see it's starting to come up. All right, next thing you want to do, we need to turn on our HUD. So this big uh, knob right here, all you're going to do is left click and hold. And then just push your mouse up. As you can see, the HUD popped up. All right. Next thing we want to do, we want to turn this on. All right, now this little middle knob, it says off and bright. So the same thing, just like this knob. Click and hold and push up. And this right here will take uh, take a little bit longer than these, but uh, you'll see the um, your map pop up. All right. Now, what I like to do from here is, since I got the map up, I don't like the map version because I can't read anything. So if you click, let me come in a little bit. You can see all these. It says TACN, TCN, ILS, Mode, and VEC, ACL. So if you click right here to Mode one time, you see it will put a bracket, uh, a square around map. All right. So now we have um, selected the map. We we'll click it again, and it changes. So now we can actually see what's going on. All right. Now to change this, and it works the same with all your DDIs, this here, over here, and this. But if you come down and you click menu, which is the middle button right here, all right, this will let you switch between pages. All right, so you got your store page. This is where your weapons um, will tell you what you've got, <coughs> what you got left and everything like that. All right, so we got our HUD. Let's click it again. I'm not really sure what this is. I've never used it, but it's there. You got your SA. The same thing. I don't know what it does. I haven't learned all that yet. All right, so let's click again. You got your HSI, which is the map part we were talking about. The first thing that we saw, then we came to this. All right, so let's go back to, you got your checklist. <coughs> it tells you everything you need to look at, <coughs> excuse me, to land and take off. And this tells you your weight of your aircraft currently. All right. Comes in really handy on the carrier. Not so, you know, on the airfield, it's, it's not too bad. Um, you can use it if you want to. I mainly just use this for carrier takeoffs. Uh, then you got your engine. It tells you everything that your engine is doing. So 296, as you can see up here on the top left, 296. So it just gives a little bit more uh, further readout on one page without having to look at everything. But I never hardly use this either. All right. 
So what I'm going to come to do right now is I'm going to come to EW. I'm going to click on my early warning. All right. So once I click on that early warning, I'm not going to turn it on just yet. What we're going to do now is I'm going to come over here to this DDI, click menu, and you're going to look down and you're going to see FCS. All right. So click on the FCS and this is showing the status of our aircraft at the current moment. Now our objective here is to get these X's gone. All right. So before we may really mess with it, we're going to come down and we're going to go ahead and turn on the left engine by left clicking. And we come back to this and the same thing we did with the right engine. We're going to wait till 20%. We're going to idle up and just let it come up to 60% at least. All right. So you can see this now moved and now it's flush with this. This is where you want your throttle to be at. All right. So we're just going to let this thing do its thing. All right. So now we're at 60%. Now it's time to take care of this left DDI, the FCS. All right. So the, what you're going to have to do, you're going to come over here. Look directly behind the fuel dump switch and look for the FCS reset. So we're going to hit the reset button. Button, excuse me, I can't talk. Click it one time and hey, look, now everything's gone. All right. So we still got some more stuff to do with this though. All right. So what I, what I always do from here is once I get done, look back, back here. You see this knob, it says oxygen flow. All right, make sure this is turned on. All right, most of the time by default, it's always going to be on, but there has been cases where I've seen it off. So just make sure that it's turned on. Then look directly above it, the OBOX, this will turn your oxygen flow to your mask on. So we're going to go ahead and turn that on. All right, you hear the little two beeps? Now come over here to your rudder trim, which is this button right here. All right, the little button that sticks up. Just press and click it and hold it for about a second and let go. Now you've trimmed your rudder. All right, so now we're going to come back. All right, and you're going to see all this buttons, uh, these numbers change. All right, here in just a second. All right, the best thing to do is come down here. When you get done uh, trimming your rudder, And since we're on the field, our hook bypass is set to uh, carrier currently. We want to put it on field. So let's pop that on field. Make sure your anti-skid is on. And this is your flaps right here. All right. This big red knob, that's your landing gear. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so we got to do a bit test for the Hornet. All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to right click two times. Put the button up to auto. All right. Now, what we got to do now is we got to do our bit test. Okay. So you're going to come to your right DDI, and as you can see, it says bit failures. All right. Just top left button right here. Click it one time. You got MC1 go, MC2 go. Our goal here is to get the FCSA and the FCSB to say go. All right, it says perform bit. All right, now to do this, a lot of people get confused with it, but it gets, it's really simple. And I had to look at YouTube videos to figure out what I was supposed to do. All right, so we're going to come back here. And if you see this knob, all right, you can actually click this knob up and down. All right, but you're going to have to click and hold this thing up to do your bit test. Now, I've got it binded to my throttle on my T16,000M uh, throttle where all I got to do is press and hold it. I don't have to come over here and look at it. And it helps me out. So just press and hold it, right? All right. So remember that So because we're about to do the bit test. All right. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to press and hold that knob I just showed you. It is up right now. I'm going to press and hold down this button. Now, as you can see, the FCSA and B has changed. It says end test. 
Now, I like to leave my cursor, everything held, until the cursor disappears. Once you do that, come back over to your flaps and click left click one time and bring it to half. Now, we just wait until you get the beeps and these will say go. All right, we got the go. All right. So now what I'm going to do, and when before you take off, um, oh, I didn't even show you this, but once we hit the bit, we start the bit, all these numbers will start changing. And now this is set up. You're done with the FCS right now. Now, in the game tutorial, it will tell you to leave this on to... Um, taxi and all that stuff you really don't need that it it, it doesn't it, it's it to me it's not needed you may think it's otherwise but uh, it's personal preference if you want it up just leave it up all right so now we're getting this indication our canopy's open so let's go over and close our canopy as you can see it's still up all right so look right here it says canopy you're gonna left click and hold So now our canopy is closed. Okay. Now what I like to do outside the tutorial is as soon as I start my battery up and I hit my APU, while the APU warms up, I just come over and close my canopy. Now I go ahead and do that and get that out of the way. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. All right. So now what I want to do is I'm going to set up my early warning. All right. So to turn this on, you're going to look at these buttons, right? Look down just below these buttons. You see these five squares. All right. If you come over to the furthest right one, click it. It will turn on your early warning. Now, this is, comes in handy when uh, you got air defense and SAM sites, everything like that, taking shots at you, uh, as well as air threats that are shooting missiles at you. This will let you know. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to perform a bit test as well on this. And this don't take long. So just click over here and just click bit. And it will go through the little pattern. Make some noise. And it's done. All right, so it's done. All right, you'll see the little plane pop back up. All right. Now we want to set up our countermeasures. So what I like to do is I like to keep this on bypass and take this knob right here, right click and put it on REC. This will let you control your electronic countermeasures so you don't run out of them as fast. Now if you set it to, um, to on and everything, it will use a lot more than what you really want and you'll run out of countermeasures. You'll run out of flares and you'll run out of chaffs and everything. So. Um, <clears throat> I'm not 100% sure on countermeasures. I just know that this is what everybody told me to set mine as, as it will help you maintain um, a good count of flares. And, you know, so you don't want to use them all that much or not use all of my money. All right. So what I also like to do is I want to set my bingo level for my fuel. So if you go to these arrows and you can just play with this, you know, depending on your mission. Um, but generally, I like to set mine to 2000. So once my fuel up here gets to 2,000, the little lady on the computer will come in and say, bingo, bingo. And that will let you know, hey, it's time to head home. All right. So now that that's done, I'm going to come over here to my altitude. I think it's called an altitude meter, something like that. And just use your mouse wheel and uh, kind of move it and line it up. Well, it's not altitude. There's altitude. This is, uh, I, I think, this is more for your, it lets you know your aircraft is level with the horizon. Horizon indicator, that's it. Yeah. Thinking about it. I'm not good with terms. I just know what it does. All right. So now what we want to do is, and this is where it comes in personal preference. All right, with your DDIs. I like to come in and set mine to HSI. I want to know where I'm going. You know, at first, once I get in the air and I get set, I can change this. Um, and I'm going to come over here. And you can put your radar mode, uh, air radar on. 
You can put your store page if you want. Just anything you really want to put. Um, now, let's say if I want my early warning up here, I'm going to click on it. You see it's no longer here. Because your early warning can only be on one screen at a time. However, you can have an HSI here and here at the same time. See? But we're going to put, I'm going to just keep the early warning down here for now. And I'm just going to put air radar up. All right. And you see it's not on right now. We got to get this turned on. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come in and we're going to put our radar on. If you remember the INS switch we put on ground earlier, if you look to the left, radar. All right. And you see it's off. So we're going to right click. Now it's on standby. If we go one more, it's in operation. And now watch the radar. Radar is now moving. And uh, we'll, we'll probably do another tutorial on the air radar as well. Uh, but that's how you get it turned on. All right, so the next thing we want to do, we're pretty much set for takeoff almost. We're going to tighten up our seat belt. That's what this is. Come over here, activate your ejection seat. And to launch you out of the, if you're getting, things get a little hairy and you want to eject, you use your mouse, look down, look at this little bar, click the sucker three times, and you'll eject. All right, so now we're going to turn on our INS to navigation. So we're going to cl right click one time. Now we're set to nav mode. All right, so we're pretty much ready to go. All right, but there's one thing I can't never get it to work right, So, but it's kind of funny. I'm going to put my communications menu, which is your backslash below your base, uh, backspace. But I've got mine set on my throttle. So we're going to go to uh, ATC and our current base right now. I don't even know where we're at. But it doesn't matter. But you can request takeoff, request taxi and everything. But uh, let's look and see where we're at so I can show you. All right. Oh, we're at Katasi. Okay, okay. All right, you bring up this menu, you just click F10. And if you look at the runways, it will tell you 08 on that side and 26 on this side. All right, so we're at Katasi. So let's show you this. Let's go to Air Traffic Control, ATC. You can click it with your mouse or just hit F5. So we're at Katasi. Request startup. We're already started up, so it's not going to matter. All right, so let's go over here and request taxi to runway. All right, so he's telling me runway eight. So like I said, you come over here and pull up your menu, runway eight. And we need to find out where we're at. So we're here. So we know we need to come out, come right, and follow this road all the way down. And so we know not to go to the first one. We go to the second one. All right. So the next thing we want to do is we want to take our break off. So now we've got our break off. Now we are ready to roll. All right, so let's do one more double check around the cockpit. Make sure everything is set to where we need it to set at. All right, everything looks good. Bingo set. Radar's on. All right, so it's time to taxi out. All right, so we're going to throttle up just a little bit. As you can see, we're on nose wheel steering. That's what this indication right here. Now you can also um, put on nose wheel steering high, just like that, and it will kind of like pivot you in one spot. But you only really need that on uh, sharp turns on the airfields and carriers. Over here, you really don't need it. And to taxi, all, you, all you're going to do is just maintain a comfortable speed that's right for you, where you like. Just find the speed. Everybody will tell you, um, oh, you need to be at this speed. You need to be at this speed. You know, no, and, and they're not wrong, but just find your taxi speed that works for you.
It's not like you're going to get pulled over. So now we're just gonna we're just gonna taxi and we're just gonna enjoy this little cruise down to the runway. You can look around. I really need track IR though. Track IR makes a difference in this game, guys. It really does. Um, so you can stop right here. And let's look and see where we're at. So you can see we're at runway eight now. And, I sh and I, I'm going to show you the noticeable steering high with this part right here. Um, I don't really need it because I can make the turn. But just for training purposes, we're going to use the noticeable steering high. So let's say if I, oh, I went too far. You know, I... <clears throat> All right, we got clearance to take off. Okay. All right. Now, let's say if we go too far and you're like, ah, I don't know if I want to make this turn because I might end up in the grass. Well, turn your nose with steering high on, cut it hard left, and then throttle up just a little, enough to get it turning. And once you get it set, you can turn it off. And what I like to do, and that's different if you're flying in a squadron, uh, you just got to practice your takeoffs. But when I'm by myself, I like to be in the middle of the runway. And I like to try to put this circle, I'll show you this, right in the middle, if I can. All right, this little circle right here. I like to try to get this kind of lined up with, with this. As you can see, I'm not perfectly lined up, but I'm, I feel like I'm, you know, center of the runway, which is fine. Now, a lot of people will tell you, <coughs> before you take off, <clears throat> You want to check 80%. And what that means is bring these numbers up to 80%. Let it sit for about a second or two and make sure your aircraft is performing right. Well, me, personally, they call me psycho for a reason. Um, I don't like doing that. I just like to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go. I'm going to press and hold my brake down. You know, let's double check the flaps. All right, flaps are set. Anti-skid is on. All right. Get my thing centered up here. All right, I'm braking all the way, and I'm throttling up to 100%. And as soon as your plane starts moving, let off the brake. And once uh, you want to keep this center in the runway the best you can, now, as you can see, there's no wind, but when there's wind, there's a difference. And see, I didn't even, I didn't even uh, pitch the nose up or pull back on the stick. The aircraft flies itself. Now, if you land... And you've trimmed your nose down. Excuse me. Hold on before we do that. Let me. Uh, we got to get landing gear. <laughs> I'm talking. Landing gear and flaps up all the way to auto. So landing gear up, flaps to auto. All right. So now we are. We have taken off from the airport. It is time for combat. Start following waypoints. Go where you're going. And we've got a failure. Go figure, landing gear is a failure. I've got random system failures on, so that will happen. And it is stuck. Everything is stuck. Well, the good thing is, I get to show you how to eject, even though we don't have to, but we're going to just eject. Um, when you turn random system failures on in the options, this is what can happen. <laughs> I think my crew chief was messing with me. I must have made him mad. I should have bought him that beer. Hey, look at there. All right, it worked. It worked. Good deal, good deal. 
Probably I might have been going too fast because I was talking. Now, if you are generally, the guideline is, if you're going more than 275, 280-ish and above, sometimes your landing gear can get stuck. So you want to make sure you get your landing gear up as fast as possible as soon as you take off. And I should have remembered that in this tutorial, but you get the idea. And now you're just free to kind of go wherever you want to go. Follow your waypoints that you have set or for your mission that is preset and go fly your mission. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on uh, the F-18 Hornet startup and takeoff, even though we did have a system failure. And um, feel free to uh, subscribe and like to the channel. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm uh, I'm pretty much always around. Uh, sometimes it may take me a little bit to get back to you, but feel free to uh, also hit me up on Twitch, Psycho X Warrior. We uh, I stream DCS, Star Citizen, and Elite Dangerous. But we have a squadron in DCS that we fly pretty regular, and DCS is uh, my primary game. But uh, yeah, feel free to stop by, throw us a like, throw us a share, whatever you want to do. If you like the video, um, tell me uh, tell me what you liked about it. If you hated the video, tell me why you hated it and what I can do better. Like I said, this is my very first training tutorial video, and I always look to improve. So I am open to suggestions. I am open to criticism. Um, if you have any tips that can make the video better, please do so. Please let me know, um, and we'll go from there. And we'll see if old Psycho here can't make uh, better videos. Uh, but I do appreciate you watching the video, guys. And fly safe. And I am a, mind, a man of my word. So I'm going to give you guys an eject. Mayday, mayday, mayday. And we're going to free float. It's a long way. Bye-bye, Psycho. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate it, and you have a wonderful day.